Hi, it's Rob. Welcome to another video in the Infrastructure as Code on AWS with Terraform playlist. In this demo, we'll spin up an Amazon Linux EC2 instance with Jenkins and Terraform installed using Terraform. Before we get started, I want to mention that having a foundation in Terraform will be helpful in following along. So if concepts like variables, outputs, and modules aren't familiar to you, I recommend watching the videos at the beginning of the playlist to build a foundation before moving forward. Okay, with that out of the way, let's start building. To get started, I want to mention that there are two GitHub repos associated with this project. The first is the Jenkins demo repo, which contains the code for a Jenkins pipeline to deploy an S3 bucket using Terraform. The second is the infrastructure as code on AWS with Terraform repo, specifically the number eight Terraform Jenkins server with Terraform folder in the source folder. This is the code we'll use to provision the EC2 instance and install Jenkins in Terraform. Now, in the AWS EC2 console, you see I currently have no instances. And in the S3 console, you see I have no buckets. So let's jump into VS Code and look at the source to provision the instance. Starting in the main TF, we see our Terraform block with a required version, required providers, and a module for TF state. Also in the providers TF file, I've specified USD East one as my AWS region. Jumping into the modules folder and the TF state folder and opening the main TF, we see that this template provisions an AWS S3 bucket with bucket versioning and server side encryption, as well as a Dynamo DB table, all to support Terraform remote state. Values for all the variables are in the locals TF file in the root of the project. So now I'll jump into a terminal, change into the source folder and the eight Terraform Jenkins server with Terraform folder. Do a Terraform format and a Terraform init. Now I'll do a Terraform validate and that looks good. So now I'll run a Terraform plan. And we see the plan is to add four resources. So now I'll go ahead and apply the plan. And the four resources for Terraform state have been added. So back in the main TF, I'll uncomment the back end block, save the file, and run a Terraform init to migrate the local backend to the remote backend on AWS. Here, I'll say yes to continue. And the remote state has been initialized. Now, moving further down in the main TF, we see I have a module for a VPC, whose source is the VPC folder in the modules folder. And this takes two parameters, a default VPC name and default subnet name, whose values are both in the locals TF file. Now, let's jump into the VPC module and open the main TF. And here we see a data block for the AWS availability zones then a resource for the AWS default VPC, which will create a default VPC if one doesn't exist. If it does exist, this tag property will set the name equal to the default VPC name passed in from the root main TF file. The other resource is the AWS default subnet, which will grab the first subnet name from the list of the AWS availability zones 
and create a default subnet if one doesn't exist. If it does exist, it'll set the name tag equal to the value passed in from the root main TF. The next module is the IAM module, whose source is in the modules IAM folder. This takes several parameters, the values of which, again, are in the locals TF file. Jumping into the IAM folder and opening the main TF, we see this template has four resources. An AWS IAM policy, whose statement allows all actions on all resources, which for this demo is fine. Then an AWS IAM role, whose statement allows the EC2 principal service to perform the STS assume role action. Then there's an AWS IAM policy attachment, which will attach the policy to the role. And finally, an AWS IAM instance profile, which attaches the role to the profile. The next module in the root main TF is the server module, which will provision the EC2 instance and security groups. The source is in the server folder in the modules folder, and the value for the VPC ID is the default VPC output in the VPC module. So jumping back into the VPC module and opening the outputs, we see two outputs, the first for the default VPC ID, the second for the default availability zone ID. The values for the security groups are set in the locals TF file. The default availability zone ID, as we saw, comes from the default availability zone ID output in the VPC module. And the Jenkins instance profile name property will be set from the Jenkins instance profile name output in the IAM module. And then there are properties for the EC2 key pair and instance tag value. And this key pair will be used by the code on our local machine when we provision the next module, which is the SSH connection. But before moving into the SSH connection module, let's jump into the server folder and the modules folder and look at the main TF. Here we see a data block, which will get the latest version of the Amazon Linux 2 AMI. Then there's an AWS security group resource, which creates an ingress on port 8080, as well as an ingress on port 22, and an egress. All of these values are passed in as variables from the root main TF file. Then we have resources to create the key pair, where the AWS key pair resource has a provisioner of local exec, which will copy the private key PEM file to the local working directory. There's also a TLS private key and a local file, which will set file permissions for the PEM file on the local machine. And finally, there's the AWS instance, which uses the latest Amazon Linux 2 AMI and sets the instance type to a T2 micro. In here, we're setting the key name to the PEM file created in the resources above. Finally, in the SSH connection module, we see a null resource block, which creates a connection of type SSH for the current user, whose name is defined in a locals TF file, and whose private key has a value of the file, which is passed in and it's a variable for the local file name. So back in the root main TF, we see the local file names value comes from the local file name output in the server module. And the host is equal to the public IP address, which is passed in as a variable, which is the public IP output in the server module. The file provisioner has a source property, which points to the SSH connection file source variable, which if we jump into the locals TF, we see is the script.sh shell script in the scripts folder. So jumping into the scripts folder, and opening the shell script, we see commands to do a yum update and install Jenkins, then enable, start, and get the status of Jenkins, as well as cat the initial admin password. Then we install git, 
and finally install Terraform in the slash user slash local slash bin folder. And the destination property has a value which is set from the SSH connection file destination variable, which in the locals TF is the shell script in the slash temp folder on the EC2 instance. So with our modules uncommented, I'll go ahead and save the root main TF, jump back into a terminal, and do a Terraform init to initialize the new modules, run the Terraform validate, and a Terraform plan. And we see the plan is to add 12 resources. And I want to point out that if you now look in the root of our project folder, you'll see the PEM file on our local machine. Now I'll go ahead and apply the plan. And with the apply complete and our 12 resources provisioned, if we jump back into the EC2 console, refresh, we see our Jenkins server. And if I grab the public IP and hit it on port 8080, Jenkins is loaded. So now I need to add the administrator password. So if I go back to my terminal and scroll up, I'll copy the password, paste it in, and click continue. Whoops, looks like I copied that wrong. So let me jump back. Yep, and I missed a letter. Try again. That looks better. So install suggested plugins. Now I'll create an admin user. Then save and continue. Save and finish and start using Jenkins. Now I'll set my admin user's time zone. apply and save, then jump into the dashboard, manage Jenkins, plugins, available plugins, and install the Terraform plugin. Now go back to manage Jenkins, click on tools, I'll configure Git, and add a Terraform installation. I'll give it a name. And here I don't want to install Terraform automatically. I want to use the path where I installed Terraform in the shell script, which is the user local bin folder. Now I'll apply and save, then create a new item. I'll give it a name. It'll be a pipeline. Now I'll scroll down to the pipeline section, then select pipeline script from SCM. For SCM, I'll select Git and then provide a path to my Jenkins demo repo. I'll change the branch to main. And here we see the script path points to the Jenkins file, which is in the root of the repo. Now, if we jump into the repo, we see in the main TF, I'm simply provisioning an S3 bucket. And if we jump into the Jenkins file, we see our declarative pipeline, which will execute four stages. 
The first is a Terraform format, then a Terraform init, a Terraform plan, and finally a Terraform apply. So back in Jenkins, I'll apply and save, then run the job. And we see our job running. And if we go into the console output, we see the Terraform format and Terraform init. Now the Terraform plan. which is to add one resource, and now the Terraform apply. Now the apply is complete with one resource added, and we finish successfully. So now if we jump into the S3 console and refresh, in addition to the bucket for our remote state, we now see our new demo bucket, which you'll recall was declared as a resource inside of the main TF in the Jenkins demo repo. So that concludes this demo on spinning up an Amazon Linux 2 EC2 instance, installing Jenkins and Terraform using Terraform, and then provisioning an S3 bucket using a Jenkins pipeline to execute Terraform commands. If you found it useful, feel free to give it a like. And if you'd like to be notified when I add more content to the channel, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.